So I've just finished watching Interstellar. We watched half of it Sunday night, half of it Monday night, and here it is Tuesday. I'm still wearing the watch and I'm making a review on it. Pathetic loser. Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm a pathetic watch addict. Hiya guys, hope you're well. So yeah, I've had this watch since last summer and I just thought I might as well make a, another video on it. I made one previously and explained how it was a gift from my family and that in itself puts value on it that you could never really, I could never sell the watch. It's got more value and it will always retain more value to me because my family bought it to me. They surprised me with it as well and I love it. I absolutely love this watch. It's got the new updated H40 movement, which has got 80 hours of power reserve. And for a day date, <laughs> you'd almost say that's absolutely essential because if this runs out of power and you leave it a couple of days and you want to wear it again, it's a bit of a faff resetting it all. But that 80 hours, you can put it down for a weekend. And actually, if I want such a watch knob, I'd get so much more use out of this. And that's kind of why I've started wearing it the last few days and why I've watched the movie and why I'm making this review. Because actually, this is a great watch. This is... a uh, I would say probably the most iconic watch under a thousand pound even. I love the look of it. Uh, I sold it previously because I didn't think the bracelet was up to much and it is a big, it feels like a big 42 because it's all dialed, but that is completely unfair to class a watch that was at the time seven, eight hundred pound and compare it to my Rolex bracelet or my Amiga bracelet. So yeah, uh, I missed it because I missed it because I love the film and I do and I'm hesitant to say that because it's a little bit geeky. The film would have been a great film, whether it had been a Swatch watch or a Mickey Mouse watch, whatever they wore in that movie, it was going to be a fantastic movie. It's a brilliant movie, it is. So there's no denying that, but this watch, actually, once you get hands on with it and experience it, little things like the the markers, they've like got ridges on them serrated and they really f reflect the light. Absolutely fantastic. They just look the business. And it's got the 10, 15 on the outside. And then what's interesting, it's got the 1, 2, 3, up to 12 on the inside circle. So, again, just a little design cue that's actually really cool. It's classed as a pilot's watch, but the, the guy in the movie, I, I suppose, officially was a, a pilot. But he was actually going to space. So, astronauts don't wear this, do they, in the real world? But anyway... <laughs> Get that about. So it's officially called the Khaki Aviation Pilot Day Day Auto. Uh, what's made it famous is the film Interstellar from 2014. And this is the movement. Hang on. H64615135. Massive 80 hour power reserve now, which makes all the difference for the watch, I feel. And it's 100 meter water resistance here. And it retails at £770. And. You can get this from Francis and Gay Jewelers. You don't have to. There is a other, other watch shops out there, but none of them are as good as Francis and Gay Jewelers. I didn't have to say that. They're really nice guys. My wife actually bought me this from somewhere else. <laughs> so this watch is 42 mil case, 20 mil lugs, 18.8 mil thick. So although it's 42 mil, that lower thickness is really, really handy. Lug to lug is 48.4, so under that magic 50 millimeter mark, and it tapers from 20 mil down to 18 mil, which is fantastic. Now, for me, a day day is almost the most iconic watch. It's the almost it's like the all rounder watch. This watch, I love a day day for some reason. 
when you get in the car and you're writing in your diary or you're going to work, you know, the day, the time, and the, the day, the day, and the time. And I think this is a watch that I could wear forever if I want a watch snob and preferred <laughs> more prestigious brands. And that's ultimately what stops me, stops me from wearing it more often. And whenever I've worn it in a video, then watch, watched it back, I look at it and I think, oh, that's nice. I really do like it. And then when you pick it up, the crystal is a domed crystal and the way it reflects the light, oh, it's quite magical, actually. The loom is adequate. It's not a bad loom. It has loom and like any watch, no matter how much the cost, when you fire it up to start, it looks great, but it tends to die down quite quickly. But ultimately, I used to be a real loom freak and if it had bad loom or little loom, that's it. The watch were being sold, but not now. I'm a little bit more comfortable with a... Uh, less loom in my life for some bizarre reason other things that really attract me to this watch are the, the case back which is absolutely fantastic i love a display case back for some reason and the connection with the film is a really good thing but ultimately it is a nice watch i mean this is something that my wife bought me this and the family bought it me last year and i've worn it maybe once a week if that wants it and it's it's not enough i need to get more use out of it so I've got a 42 black belt in the Speedmaster. I could probably sell that, even though it's a better watch, more expensive watch, blah, 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 probably more iconic. But actually, I want to start getting more use out of this. And I'm thinking of shrinking the collection further and further down, just for the simple reason that I just don't wear the watches in my collection enough. I've got the Globemaster that I'll never sell, and I've got this that I'll never sell. And the date just, I might sell it, but ultimately those three, the Globemaster, the date just, and the Hamilton, could be my three watch collection. There's two-thirds that have got real genuine meaning to me because a watch as a gift is far more important than going out and being selfish and buying it yourself. So that to me is what's really important to me. Uh, I think this watch ultimately, I always thought originally when I bought it that for a 42 mil watch, it needed 22 mil lugs. But actually now the 20 mil lugs isn't too bad. The bracelet is probably one of the things that could be better on it. The clasp is adequate again. But again, we're talking, you know, less than a thousand pound watch. Actually, it's not bad quality. The 80 power is a massive upgrade from the Poxy 38 that you got before. And for me, I think the size looks okay. I don't know what you guys think. But for me, when you look at it like that close up, you think, Jesus, that's big. But actually, it's I've just put this on this evening from wearing my Rolex date, just 41. And I've customised the size in less than an hour on this. Whereas previously when I'd recorded this, the Sea Dweller, it took me about four days four days to get used to it so what do you guys a think of hamilton do you like the movie if you don't i think you've got something a little bit wrong with you to be honest it's a fantastic movie absolutely brilliant music everything about it is just one of my all-time top five movies braveheart being one of them maybe gladiator i'll have to think about the rest anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video over and out i'll see you in the next one